Hi there, Spear Point, round two. Here we go. This time I've changed the setup a little bit. This is the vertical flask contraption I made previously. This is the, the Spear Point. Uh, this, this is what I'm hoping to do as an in gate and kind of a feeder, a big, thick copper pipe. Now you might be looking at this really thin and thinking a few things. One, you might think it's too small. Two, it's not connected. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger later. Uh, but the reason it's small, for a few reasons. One, I want it to kind of choke the speed. I don't want to dump the metal in here and just fill it up because you get turbulence and junk. And I kind of I, I kind of want this to act as like sort of a choke. I mentioned chokes in the previous time I tried casting this. Um, don't remember if I cut it or not. But anyways, I don't want the metal just gushing in. I want it to flow in, kind of get trapped, and then gargle up through this, filling up the feeder, which will be very tall, adding a bunch of head pressure to, to hopefully fill in some details. So that's why it's small. Really, really, this thin thing was just so I could kind of lay out how I wanted stuff. I, I am going to cut it a little bigger. Also, I'm going to preheat this sand this time to hopefully allow the, the metal to run in and fill up and not solidify anywhere. I'm going to use a torch for that. Also, this is vertical. Remember? Vertical. This is a little different setup than you would traditionally uh, see bronze spear points cast in. Uh, traditionally, they had like a split mold where it was carved in stone or something more permanent. Set upright, they would pour the metal in tin bronze. Uh, I'm not using tin bronze. Then it would solidify, pop them out, drop the thing, wrap them back together, and, and go again. Uh, I'm using aluminum bronze, I've mentioned that before. Uh, however, if, I, if this fails, this is round two, if this fails, I'll switch to tin bronze or silicon bronze and try again. Hopefully this won't fail. So this is the setup. Again, this is rammed up just like last time. This is rammed up poorly. These are jammed in. Then I'm going to ram up the top one, flip it over, re-ram up this bottom one, then cut the gates. I'm kind of speeding through this because I really want to get done with this and I already blabbered on and on about this 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 3d print it's a 3d scan of a bronze age spear point uh, that i got on my mini factory i'll put a link down below if you want to hear me ramble all about the spear point and about bronze age uh check the other video out i'm not going to bore all of you with the same junk again we have new junk to ramble about this time but all right without further ado we shall begin with the ramming up there's going to be a little bit more uh cleaning up of the mold this time but I'm sure it'll be fine. Do, 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 do. I wanted to do this, uh, this thing last weekend when I made this flask. But if you remember, my back was hurting. Uh, by hurting, I mean I screwed it up really bad, yawning too big. Well, that was a week ago. I'm feeling much better today. Uh, in fact, yesterday I moved a whole bunch of appliances out of this place. Well, a bunch. Only two, but they were old, heavy ones. And then today I moved 300 pounds of softener salt into my basement, and I'm still feeling pretty good, so I think I'll be alright. You know, I've been watching a bunch of videos by YouTube channel Old Foundry Man. He is, I assume, an old man who does foundry stuff. And he uses a different kind of sand. He uses like a facing sand. It's a very finely grained sand that he puts over the pattern and then he just uses normal wet sand over it. I'm not going to do that because I don't have the facilities to grind this stuff thinner. Also, I think Petrobon gives a half decent surface finish anyway, but it was kind of a neat way to, to see it done. I've read about that in a couple of books, facing sand, but I don't have any, obviously. Of course, he does a lot of castings in aluminum car parts like throttle bodies and that kind of thing and, and all that. And that's kind of what I wanted to do originally when I got into casting. The guy who convinced me to get into casting did so by showing me a throttle body adapter he made to put some larger throttle body on some car that he was making. And my goal all along here has been make, has been like building cars because I like cars, but for some reason I got kind of distracted because turns out all this other stuff that you can do is really cool and really interesting. So I'm like... Yeah, I want to do the car thing, but I also want to do all these other millions of things. This is going to be really interesting with this big hole on the top. Oh, before I forget, I have a piece of filler rod here. Steel TIG welding filler rod. This is what I used before to vent. I put a bunch of little holes through it. You know, you kind of hold it next to uh, the edge of the flask to see how deep it should go. And then you can poke holes into it. And this allows air to vent. Now, Petrobond is pretty good at venting to begin with, uh, and this really isn't going to have any areas where there's, there's metal trapped. 
because the metal will be flowing in through the little hole and bubbling up the big thing as all the air escapes out the top. Uh, a lot of stuff. I don't, if, if I keep saying it's worthless, I don't know why I kept doing it. That was dumb. Sure, it's nice having a lighter flask that I can actually pick up without grunting like a little baby. And yes, I've decided babies grunt when they pick up flasks full of sand. Also when they poop and when they do literally anything. I have children. I know the poop grunt and the poop face. And sadly, the poop smell and the poop everything else. A lot of poop with babies. You see, this is the one we just rammed up. And if I look really closely, it probably doesn't show on the camera. This looks pretty good, but this doesn't look real good. That's why I'm dumping this one out. See, especially right there. I'm going to have to get really creative with this top thing, which I'm doing later. I've never done a vertical flask before, so I don't really have it down pat, the process here. But I'm sure I'll find out whatever mistakes I make later. Still haven't gotten a sock for that thing. They all have holes in them, including the one on one of them that I'm wearing right now. Now let's see if that turned out. Oh, it certainly looks fine. This transition here I'm slightly worried about because there's a little minor step from this to that. I suppose I could fix that with this here spoon. Because you don't want the step. You want a smooth transition, I think. I think because I've never actually done this. So I want to refrain from saying you definitely want this, you definitely don't want this. Quite sure, however, you do not want loose sand in anything. That's why I'm brushing it with this very gentle brush. And I realize I did that before I even cut the gates or the, or the widening of this. Now doing it like this is going to ruin the tip. It's not going to look so neat, especially on one side. But you know what? I'll deal with it. Wow, my hands are shaky. Need more coffee. Ah, that top of that's covered in sand. That tastes great. Here I am, embiggening the sprue. It's a cromulent word, look it up. I've been watching S.W. Dweeb, the other guy who did the aluminum bronze hammer thing, and he uses a big tapered sprue, and I have sprue envy, so I'm gonna make mine tapered. Now I've seen people do this. I kinda drop it to try to disturb any loose sand, which is why I was covering everything with baby powder, so if any loose sand did drop anywhere, it wouldn't stick, and I could have blown it away just then. Now for this vertical thing. Ooh, there's there's some loose sand. And now it's in my face. Excellent. Not sure that's an ideal surface. Now for this, I'm going to set this in place, kind of eyeball where I want holes. And the holes are get actually going to be bigger in here than they are in here. Yeah, they look pretty evenly located, like meh-ish. So now I'm going to set this aside. Pack it in there like the sardines that probably weren't in this can. Because they don't come canned. Or maybe they do. But I, I hate sardines, so this definitely wasn't what was in here. Not saying sardines are gross, and if you like them, that makes you gross or anything. But I'm not a big fan of uh, dead fish in a can. Okay, adequately packed in. I have cleaned up, deburred, and sharpened the edge of this, so I should be able to just slip it right down through there. Kind of like so. And in doing so, just remove a core of sand. Now for the other core of sand. And I'll clean out the ends. Trying to reduce loose sand as much as possible. Now this back, I know you're not going to be able to see this, but I can't either. Hmm. I can see that the holes actually do line up. Perhaps they line up a little better in this direction. So I'm going to pour into this one. So I'm going to make this one kind of funnily looking. I'm going to do that with a funnel. There. Nice. Well, kind of cracked the sand up on the top. Now the only remaining issue is how I'm going to keep these two clamped together so nicely. I think I'm going to try these big, really long screws. There we go. I'll do one on the opposite corner. Why not? That is fine. That's real, real tight together. Good. Bingo, I think. I mean, there's really nowhere else for that thing to go but down the hole. It's probably fine. It's good enough. Fire up the grill. And here we go. It's burning away. Take a look. Just fired it up. All those other things I cast before, those are in there. Uh, melting it, melting it all again, and I threw in about a pound more copper. So that's a pound is a significant portion of what I put in there. 
so hopefully that'll bring the copper content up high enough it won't be so brittle. I hammered on one of the sprues, the risers that I cut off. I just put it on that uh, railroad track anvil, pounded it with a hammer. It didn't shatter, so I don't think it's super brittle. So just a little bit more copper should bring it up to good. I put in a pound more. So I'm gonna wait till it's hotter to pour this time. Hopefully that'll help it get a little more detail. I'm also going to preheat the mold with this thing, which I didn't check to see if I had gas. Oh yeah, I'm good. So preheating the mold, I'm gonna shoot this down into the things and warm up the sand. That way the sand doesn't suck all the heat out. Plus it will be hotter. So two things I'm doing differently this time. Well, we'll find out. I'm trying to fix everything I did wrong last time. Head pressure, alloy, heat, more fire. More fire is always good. It always helps things for some reason. I don't know. Except interior decorating. Fire doesn't really help with that, but it does make it more fun. Don't burn your house down. Don't do it. Bad idea. Insurance doesn't like it. Plus, you'll go to jail. Oh, yeah. It's starting to get a little drippy in there. Ooh. Mostly melted a few minutes later. But the pure copper chunks aren't melted yet. This goes to show aluminum bronze with a lower melting point than copper. I'm not in a rush to pour it this time, but there's a lot of crud that floated up to the surface here. I let it get good and hot. Another blast of heat down the hole. All right, and here we go. Oh, the wow! That heat, that heat literally burned my face a little bit there. That is very toasty. All righty. Well, here we go into my hopefully not poorly shaped. Pouring funnel thing. Oh yeah. And I'm just gonna keep this full until it bubbles. Oh, it bubbled up already. Well, that worked. Okay then, ingots. Ouch. This this glove is scalding hot. I think that's all that's all the ingot I got out of there. Well that looks successful. Filled up both sides, even though I only poured into one. Got some cool ingots and sort of cleaned out the bottom of my crucible, which is still glowing quite hot in there. Cool. Success. And now we wait. And we're back. This is ready to go. First bit of good news though, here's one of the ingots that I made. Um, does not appear to be brittle anymore. Pretty tough stuff. We're, we're back to tough aluminum bronze, not shattery aluminum bronze. So it looks like it fixed the alloy. This railroad track has come in super handy a whole bunch of times for many, many different things. I, I really like this. Idiot. Oh, of course. Idiot. Screws are still in there. I didn't have any sand or I didn't have any metal leaking through. It's not even burned along the edges. And I, I even had this set like on the on a thing, on a metal tray, in case there was a leakage, it would be contained in the tray and not spill over onto the driveway. Most people cast, or smart people cast, on a bed of sand. Boom! What do we got? Oh, look at that! Cool! I think that's about as much of a success as I could have hoped for right there. Those are way not, not sitting securely. Oh well, who cares? Coffee to celebrate. Get the sand, sand off of there. Oh, there's sand down in there. That's not good. Oh well, down the hatch. Ah, I forgot this out here. And it has gone cold, which is kind of gross. But who cares? The thing turned out. Cool. Let's see, brush. Need something to brush. Their finger is the worst possible tool for this. Cool. Remember I said one side was the better looking side? That's, that's this side. I cut the gate to be on the other. So that side's not going to look so, so nice once I cut that off. But I'll, I'll just point this side towards the camera anytime you see it. But look at that, it even preserved the cool, like, the cool running lines there that were on the original uh, print. Those are not layer lines, by the way, those were lines in the original piece. Got a little bit coming out through the sand, but that's fine, I'll just file that off. Then I got a nice thick, thick lump here, which is very, you see it's so much thicker 
that was the feeder, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have a lot of metal there. I'm thinking maybe actually make it just a knife and then sharpen it for like maybe as an unboxing knife. And y'all didn't think it would happen. Now very, very few people told me I was doomed. And they might not have even been talking about this. Where the, the tall thing was stuck down, it must not have sealed very good, so I got this little extra disc of material. On closer inspection, I didn't get perfect edges here and here. And to that I say, I'll live. Who cares? That's... Ta-da! Oh man, I just found a new use for this drum sander dealie. It's the Eastwood Contour SCT, but I think any, a lot of companies make drum sanders. It, I, I use this stripping disc, the, the Scotch-Brite looking black stripping disc that I've been using to, to rip paint off that van. I used it on this, and it, it looks like it preserved, it took all the, the black, there's a little bit of sand kind of stuck in the surface layer, and uh, you know, just general unpleasantness you get from well over copper melting temperature stuff into Petrobon. Uh, but I, I took that right down to shiny metal and preserved the cast finish. But uh, leave in the comments, do you, do you think I should make, do like a handle and then like a leather sheath thingy? I've been learning leather working. Maybe I could do that and use this as my uh, P.O. box unboxing knife. Or should I stick it on a spear on like a handle, like a long pole or something, use it as a wall hanger? I'm leaning more towards knife because I don't really care for like displaying weapons, but I could really use it for unboxing because my trowel, um, my trowel is never available when I'm looking for it. Where did it, where did, here it is. My trowel works, but bronze knife would be cooler. I think that is a stunning, shiny, gleaming success. I have not sharpened it, uh, and, and I still have a little bit of bulk on the tip that, uh, that trying to carefully angle grind that off. You know, carefully using an angle grinder, that is that is impossible. That's it's, it's like using an air hammer carefully to remove parts like sheet metal from your car. It's not gonna happen. Boom, there it is, gleaming golden aluminum bronze.